feeling trapped by all the stuff? Can't keep up? No time to think or plan? Has the rush and gush of modern life got you trapped? Slow is the new fast. Slow is the new fast. Slow is the new fast. Set your coordinates. It's Mach Zero, making time for life one thing at a time. With your host, the VIP coach, John Davidson. Hi, this is JD. You're listening to the VIP coach. So good to be with you. It is December 13th, 2016. Thank you so much for listening to Mach Zero, making time for life one thing at a time. This is going to be a great show today, folks, to get you ready for the next year. It is December, and so your thoughts are probably on how you're going to create the best year that you have ever had of your life. And if you haven't thought about that, well, I invite you to think about it because it is up for grabs. You are an entrepreneur. You're a business leader. You've gotten here by making some great choices. You've lived your life by intention. You have wanted to create what matters to you. And freedom is your most important priority. Your freedom to choose. Your freedom to go out in the marketplace, create value. Your freedom to become bigger, better, faster, stronger. To bring more value to other people's lives and to enjoy the rewards from it. So we're approaching the Christmas holiday. And this is going to be time for you to pull back, to back up, to back way up and to reflect, because reflection is the only antidote to changing your history. I'm going to say that again so it lands. Reflection is the only antidote to changing your history. And here you are, poised to go into 2017. Everything is up for grabs. There are no conceptual limits as to what you want to set your sights on. It's not about what the dream is. It's about what it does to you. So if you don't want to create something adjacent to what you already do, fine. But I think the one thing that you have to operate from as you're thinking about the upcoming year is what really does matter to you. That's because all the things that you focus on, all the subject matter that you focus on creating, they're not, they're not equal. Not everything remains the same. If everything was the same, you'd be overwhelmed. You'd have way too many things on your attention span. We all have busy lives. We all have way too much on our radar. We're all consuming and consuming, but we long to connect. We long for the simple life. We long for the simple things, sitting around the campfire and having a talk and a connection. We long for the simple Christmas that doesn't have to be equal to approval, where we're stressed out not having a gift for someone, trying to save ourselves from humiliation. Christmas. The purpose of Christmas is for bonding. It's to receive the present as a gift. The purpose of Christmas is about being together. It's about accepting another as a legitimate other. And so let's make a point. Let's look at ways that you can head into the year by making this time, this holiday time, as stress-free as possible, as peaceful for you as possible, to use the Mach Zero principle of making time for life one thing at a time. And that means you consciously making a choice to think everything, to rethink everything, to step back, reflect, think about what you want to create, to have a more creative orientation toward what happens to you. And so everything in the moment becomes an important ally for learning and construction. So what do you want to create for Christmas? I would suggest that this time, this Christmas, you go a little different at it. You just take away any social rules that you've been abiding by. You take away any guilt that's motivating you. Anything that you feel obligated to do that you really don't want to do, you take that off the table. And you take away pretending and you take away any fakery or misrepresentation. And you come down, you boil it down to one very basic organizing principle. That the Christmas that you're going to create and the time that you're going to have in the holidays is going to be spent on people, on activities, on places, on things that really matter to you. And that means taking the things that don't matter off your table. Now just think about that for a moment. Think about how much weight that's going to take off you. That it's not going to be about you trying to 
you know, abruptly confront people or people are going to say, what are you doing? You know, we normally do this and all that. Yeah, you might confront a few people. Sure, they might not agree with you. You're used to going over to so-and-so's house or, you know, and so forth. And so a little bit more isolation might freak a couple of people out. But that's not going to end a relationship. You want to be with them forever. That's fine. But for you to really create the space for no screen time, for quiet time, not all the boisterous stuff, but really more quiet for reflection, to really look back on the year, consolidate your gains on the year, you're the one, you're the guardian at the gateway, you're your own bouncer that's going to make space for you to do this. And you don't have to flare your entitlements, you don't have to defend what you're going to do. A choice just means you're selecting from the options the most important thing. And so think about the simple Christmas. Maybe it's hunkering down and just having it with your more immediate family. What I'm doing is just having it with my immediate children, my three children, my two daughters and son, and my wife and my pets, and just that simple Christmas day, and not all these layers of family that have to put money on their credit cards to have gifts for everybody. And, you know, Christmas becomes a time where we get caught in pretense, where we feel that what we give or the way we show up in Christmas is a product of who we are. We use Christmas as a branding process. And so we get obligated to give gifts at our company, and so we don't want to let ourselves down or let other people down. And so we live into all of these required behaviors that we traditionally impose on ourselves. And it just puts so much financial stress on us, and it puts takes all the fun out of it, and it just completely misses the spirit of Christmas altogether. Let's remember the spirit of Christmas is it's a restorative process. It is about you accepting anybody unconditionally. It's the finest of heart, which means to accept another as a legitimate other. And so if someone you don't know, a stranger, uh, has good in them, and you want to invite them for Christmas, invite them for Christmas. If that's someone that you want to take in, take him, take him in. Because it is a goodwill moment. It's a moment of connecting with seeing the good in others and seeing the good in ourselves and expanding and bonding and connecting from that place, which is a beautiful thought. And within that, the magic of this day is just to be present. It is to receive the present as a gift, to just show up and be together. It's the conversations. It's the belly laughs. It's the wonder and curiosity of getting to know a quality in someone else informally that they wouldn't normally share, but the conversation gets naked naked and real, and, and there you are. And so it's those moments that really make you remember the most simple part of just being a human being, yeah, of just uh, having the simple time to be, with, to be with someone and to enjoy their, their presence and to see the greatness in other people and to enjoy yourself experiencing that greatness in other people by letting other people change you and letting them help you laugh and letting them enjoy their story and listening and being grateful for what you have. You don't know how many years you have left. Life is very fragile and very precarious. You don't know how long you have to breathe and live. And so it brings you back to knowing how important that this moment is and that you'd want to share this moment cherished in the way that you'd want it because of the brevity of life. And it's important to remember that, to remember just how fragile you are and how fragile life is and how magical the present moment can be when we remember and stay close to death. Death is a tremendous teacher because it teaches us how to live. Death reminds us to take a rest in the middle of all things. Death reminds us not to wait on expressing our true feelings and being true to ourselves. Death reminds us not to work so hard and to step back and to kind of moderate our ambitions, to moderate our desire for an impressive lifestyle so we can create a satisfying and fulfilling life. Death reminds us to show up as a whole person. It reminds us to bring our humanity to the moment, both positive and negative, our incompleteness and our flaws, to let it all hang out and to forgive ourselves for being us because the more we're us, the more we allow other people to trust us because they're allowed to come out too. It reminds us to let go of the future. Death reminds us that the future is not predictable, that we can create a life 
not predict a life, that we don't have really any control over anything that's going to come toward us, that life is a wild card. Sometimes it cooperates, sometimes it doesn't. But it reminds us to expect nothing, to anticipate nothing, but be ready for anything. It reminds us to show up, that we know the future by walking. Death reminds us to let go of the past. It reminds us to see things with fresh eyes and helps us see the miraculous in what was originally ordinary. That when we look at it again with penetrating seeing and clarity, and we give time the chance to be our advocate, not our adversary, we begin to find things in life that we didn't see before, like magic. So all this, the ability to show up, to let go of the outcome but be open to the outcome, to see clearly, to see clearly without imposing the past or expecting the future with anticipation, but to let life just be living you. <laughs> And that's the restorative process of what it is to be in the company of the loved ones that you most closely want to bond with during your Christ Mass, during that time. Yeah, during this holiday. Holy day. Holy day. Holy day. The holy day is the day to be whole. And to be whole is to be healthy. Health is whole. To be whole mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical. Mental is to be mentally available, to, to extinguish too much dependence on your own knowledge, and to bring an open mind to whatever moment or people you meet. It means to suspend judgment, to not be occupied by or preoccupied by your fundamental beliefs, but to appreciate differences, because it makes life very interesting when you do. Coming to the moment with an open heart a heart that is seasoned with warmth, a heart that is banned of cynicism, a heart that is able to conserve acceptance and legitimacy. You all have this. Everyone listening to this, you have it beneath the pile of pain and rubble of all your experiences. You have a wound. Everybody does. There are no functional families. We have all come from some sort of down turns in life pain because life is made of messy therapy. It's just the way the character of life is playing us. The nature of life is that it moves in any direction. And so there's been moments that have been highs and moments that have been lows. But you can use the past. You can use the past by knowing just how incompletable it is. It's history. The only way to be free of it is to know you just can't complete it. There's no way to complete what's incomplete. That's how you outsmart it. But there's another place, another place of uh, meeting the present, meeting the gift, where there is something much larger that possesses you that you don't. And maybe it's life being in the business of creating life. Maybe it's the extended mind. Maybe it's universe. Maybe it's Godhead. I, I don't know. But there is something quelling there. And there's something that seems to be only connecting with our ability to make sense of it by continuing to move forward. It has no memory. Maybe it has some conscious effort in bringing us towards something that we don't know yet. Maybe it's a destiny that's standing in need of us. Maybe it's our truest self that's looking back at our current one. But I'm very intrigued by and interested in this divine will or this grand will that is bigger than our puny will that permeates and imbues us with goodness and helps us remember that down in our nature we are truly good and we can remember that the universe is truly a friendly place. That's a restorative process because if I treat the universe as a friendly place, then I'm more inclined to show up generously, compassionately, with understanding, equanimity, and kindness. My quality of being, my state of being, my ground of being is only commensurate with trusting this. And only I can learn how to trust it. Only I can come back when I don't. Only I can resurface my ability to trust it, even if it's denial or disappearance or or despair or even betrayal. 
I can, I can awaken. I can remember. I can remember that there was a day when I started without all of it on top of it. I can remember when I didn't have the log jam of concerns that I do. I can remember the day when I didn't hit my snooze alarm. <laughs> so can you. I can remember looking forward to the day that way, fearlessly, playfully. I can remember getting up to play with a fire truck. I can remember that moment of, hey, let's go, and letting the day just unfold, because that's what it did. And everything was okay. As it unfolded, everything was presenting itself as it did, and everything was taken care of, and that's what it was to be growing up. But you're now a adult. You're a little young person still, but you're living in an adult body. And you're trying to make sense of how this whole thing works. But you don't have a how-to manual for life. You're learning as you go. There are no experts. But one thing you're faced with year after year is you're faced with the need to unlearn things that you think you're certain about. One of the things about crossing over into the holiday, the holy day, into the new year is the process of cleansing and purging and like cleaning your closet to make space for something else. If we forget to do this, it's like never going to sleep. When we sleep, we take the garbage out. We take out the thinking and the exposure and the data and all the things we observe that we're no longer going to take with us because we have to only take the essentials. We cross through the eye of the needle every night that we sleep. And just like that is the way we cross over into the new year is we have to offload things. We have to learn to let go and let lie and let be the things that are no longer going to receive our intensity. That we no longer need to grasp those things or attach ourselves to those things. We have to be willing to let our palms open and not grasp them. Let things come and go as they do. Let people's deaths come and go as they do. Let sickness, let those negative things browse our lives and receive negativity because we don't have to be negative on negativity. We can learn to meet life more and make life more interesting by remembering that we don't know what we know. You don't know what you know. You don't know how you know what you know. You can't even trace its origins. If you go back far enough, you'd realize that there's no way to verify that you know what you know. The only way to know what you know is the validity of what presents itself right now. And knowing what you know probably isn't possible until you share some kind of connection with another human being. Because you only know the relative truth. You don't see what's going on without dependence. More like interdependence. Of being able to see through the relating that you do with others. There's no way to know who you really are until another person sees you. You can't put yourself together on your own. So that means that if you doubt you, you're probably right. Whatever you doubt you to be, whatever you don't know about you, whatever's lacking, whatever you think you don't have, you're probably right. And if you're right, I wonder what you're doing with being right. Now, I'm going to get back to this after the break, so listen to these commercials. I'll be right back. This is going to get really interesting because we're going to be talking more about identity, and we're going to be talking about it post-Christmas. So as you approach it, what is this identity piece, and what is involved with it? We're going to be talking about your inner life and outer life and the relationship part and the connections. It's going to get interesting, so stand by. Uh, it's Monday morning. I'm dragged. You've got mail. Look at this. It's the Monday Advantage video. Yeah. Now I can get past the distractions and implement something new. The Monday Advantage. It's that easy. Just subscribe free for a limited time at highlevelperformance.com. Every Monday, launch the week with fresh tools, giving you the right state of mind, focus, and confidence. See what becoming a gifted boss and serial creator is all about. Subscribe today at highlevelperformance.com. That's highlevelperformance.com. And start enjoying your Monday Advantage today. Grow your business and grow as a human being with these captivating books authored by the VIP coach himself. 
John Davidson. The Day I Built My Barbecue is about creative freedom. Learn how you can not only live well, but also grow a thriving business at the same time. John shows you his step-by-step technique with the principles, strategies, and steps to move from a business operator to a business owner. The day you build your barbecue is the day we all wish for. Totally free of distractions. Totally available to living well fully present. Then don't miss Unstoppable You. It's about creative value. When we do what we love and love what we do, we discover ways to make our business more fun and monetize our passions. Through stories, tools, and steps, this book will help you bring something to the world that no one else can and bridge your most unique talents to the deepest aspirations you have of the future. And stand in the presence of all you are. It's about creative purpose. What does it mean to live on purpose? How do we work with the mystery that life presents us at every moment. In this book, John shows us through the silent spaces in life how to connect with our innermost sacred projects and passages. You'll learn how to bring the work, language, and presence of the soul into everything you do. Visit HighLevelPerformance.com to pick up any of these books in paperback or Kindle editions today. That's HighLevelPerformance.com. Having a life where you have the creative freedom to do what you love and to offer the world something that only you can bring to the table. That is the world of high-level performance with John Davidson. That is the world of radical creativity. That is the world that you can be a part of when you realize all that is holding you back is you. Begin the journey through one-on-one coaching that gives you the finesse for business and lifetime achievement. And find your place on the roadmap to high-level performance today. Visit highlevelperformance.com. From go time to slow time, slow is the new fast. Mach Zero, making time for life one thing at a time. With VIP coach John Davidson. Hey, this is JD, the VIP coach. You're listening to John Davidson. Mach Zero, making time for life one thing at a time. Thanks for coming back. Hope you enjoyed the commercials. So, yeah, here we are. We are talking about Christmas from a really interesting lens, this crossover point of what's before and after. Because when you go into the Holy Day, you take a person with you. You take your old self. But when you come out of the Holy Day, the people that you interact with, the joy that you feel, the pleasure of being in the presence of others, the time together, the cherished moments, all that, you're not the same person going into the year. That's right. You're going to start, stop, and continue. You're a system that starts, stops, and continues. You die back into life. You leave something behind. So think about what's ready to move out. What is ready to die in you? What's ready to die around you? What have you been holding on to that it's time to say, yes, I do want to let this go? What are you hanging on to for fear? What's the old identity that you're hanging on to because you're afraid? You're afraid of humiliation. You're afraid of losing control. That's the whole thing. Fear is always cooking underneath control. Have you lost touch with how powerless you really are over this whole thing? Wouldn't it be kind of peaceful? Wouldn't it be kind of freeing to know how powerless you actually are? That that would indicate that every moment is a flux, it's a flow. It's a state of impermanence that what you knew before is no longer useful, that what you come upon knowing is available now if you make some vacancy, if you show up that way, curiously, with wonder and open mind, that maybe there's a chance to receive love and give love at new levels, that there's a joy in which you could take your gifts and those inner voices that you want to express. You don't wait for people's funerals to tell them that you love them. Go, do it now. Now's the time. Cultivate a don't know mind. That's all good. Regulate your brain, your brain certainties with your awareness. Yes. Yes. Don't just go on automatic. Don't just occupy your reactive mind. Don't just let your habits take you wherever they go. Step back, be aware. That's not about you being powerful. This has nothing to do with power over or domination or control. It has to do with orientation. You're like an artist. An artist orients herself as a creator. Artists bring creations into the world. What drives those creations? Love. Not receptive love, generative love. 
the love for creating something that is virtual, the loving of the idea, the loving of the non-material thing that is brought into being through that love. As Robert Frost would say, the best creations are created for their own sake. The best creations are created for their own sake. Take that into a business. The best creations are created for its own sake. The best value for a market, the best mission, the best vision is content that is needing to be created, that must be created for its own sake. Look at the temperament. Look at the character. Look at the quality of action when love is behind our creations. How do we get love behind our creations? Well, it's like music. How do we create music? Well, we write music when we love the music and then we create it. We forget how simple it is. See, we stuff it up and we ramp it up to be this cathartic thing where we make it about our potential and we try to move into ourself and we try to raise our level of power and then we try to be more attractive and then we make it all about our own potential. That's just wasting a bunch of time, a bunch of hype. You don't have to do all that work. Self-improvement is for the birds. Why would you self-improve yourself when the creative process doesn't need you to focus on you? You didn't do that when you made a baby. When you made a baby, you focused on bringing the baby into life. You weren't focused on what was going on with you or what was wrong with you or what your quirks were or what you needed to fix. Creating is not self-improvement. Creating is bringing into being creations that matter to you. You set your attention on the creation, not your person. In fact, the more you put it on your person, the lousier creator you will be. I guess the self-help movement never really told that in the books. And that's probably why 20% of the people that subscribe to self-help actually do something better. 80% don't. They're just busy trying to find the quick fixes, and they're stuck as workshop junkies repeating over and over again the same thing on the hamster wheel looking for a shift trying to find some kind of magic potion or powers that suddenly if they could awaken their unpotential brain into potential, that maybe life would materialize. You don't need to go into your special powers. Artists don't conjure up magic potions and things and try to dress themselves up to be magicians and being all kinds of enormous potential and all this. It's, it's sucky because, you know, when you try to affirm that you are more than you are, it just begets the belief that you're not that. Who but a person that would need to propagandize and tell themselves all these pretend things is someone who isn't. So it really pushes you down, and your subconscious mind loses respect for you. You know, so I get that you have some enemies. I get that there are things in you that are limited. You're a conflicting human system. You know, I get that you have mental constructs. We all do. It's not that we have constructs. It's that we forget we have them. We all have a past. We all have knowledge. We all have things that we think we are knowing to be true about ourselves, about the way the world is, and about the way we think others think. We fall into that all the time. It's not about how much we fall in. It's about how much we remember how to get out. We have all kinds of mental models of the world that we subscribe to. We have all kinds of embedded beliefs that we implicitly follow. It's about being awake. It's about stepping back. It's about reflection. That's why on our holy day, it's important to make space, to see our own seeing, to sense and let other people change us by opening our hearts, by letting go of fear and letting our voice, our internal voice, take inspiration in what life is presenting to us. The restorative process to trust the life that's here to trust the friendly life, that life maybe has some expanding goodness to help us meet, is to let the future arise in the moment that we are in. The future is presenting itself and unpeeling every moment. We know it by walking. It's ready, fire, aim. So that is the trust. That is the way in which we show up. That's the way that it's got to work. And if we do it that way, there's an, on, there's an honesty that we occupy. We cross a threshold. We cross from trying to push things through action to listening in a certain flow, in a constant flow. Instead of trying to put a crank on what we do with 
toxic shame trying to be offset by looking better than we are, manipulating other people's opinions, or trying to shun the fear or deal with the fear, we let it be there with loving presence. We remember our humanness. We remember how incomplete we all are. But the reason why we're afraid is we don't want to hurt ourselves. And out of self-respect, we conjure fear. Fear is a great thing. It helps us be vigilant. But when we twist the truth, when we think there are phantoms around the corner that are not there, we trick ourselves. We shut down. Instead of saying, why not? Or, you know, what if it could be different? That's not positive thinking. That's just meeting life as life is, is coming at us. One thing at a time. Mach zero. I created this show to occupy this mindset. And then, you know, as we pull back and we sense the relationships that come to us and the people that present themselves in our lives and the people that initiate us and the people that help us see through our own reflection, through their own mirroring, through their own echo backs as to how they see us and perceive us, we're able to see how we're doing what we're doing. We're able to find ourselves living in the networks of relationships that we exist in. We are only whole by letting ourselves be seen. We are only whole by existing in those conversations. Our patterns of interactions define our true properties. No unique ability, no strength, no personal gifts, nothing that makes us stand in the presence of how we are, who we are, is seeable, is available until another comes to us, is with us, is able to see us and meet us in that conversation. Nothing animates us, nothing in our own anatomy of what we are, in our truth, is, is, is going to be seen, essentially, until that other is allowing you to see us. And they have to see us with true eyes, too, that there's something they must do in their own internal cultivation to be able to see us without their judgment, without their lens, without seeing us as a video recorder that they look through, without projection, but to see us and receive us for who we are. And that is why the only way to learn and live is by cultivating and conserving legitimacy, acceptance, to bring about an atmosphere of trust. The way we learn is we learn through connection. We learn through sharing our experiences. We don't learn in isolation. We don't evolve in isolation. We belong to this. It's in the nature of who we are, and that's why we were made to be loving beings, kind and generous and we were made to be beings that had something to give, to share. We depend on this. We depend on this. And so as you approach the year, I'd like you to think about three things. Number one, how do you intend to deliver your attention this year? What steps could you take in the morning of your life, in the morning rituals of your life, to arrive more in being present and making present more primary as a choice in your life. What does that mean, being present? That means that you remember nothingness. That means that nothingness is the beginning of everything. You start with nothing. You start with what you don't know. You start constructing what you want to create from what you, know, what you know, do not know. You start constructing loving and being loved from what you don't know. Nothing is not the opposite of something. It's the place from which everything begins. You move from nowhere, moment to moment. It's a way of remembering to forget what you know. That's the open mind. Give some thought. Give some careful, careful, careful alertness, awareness to the present. Maybe it's coming into contact with others. When you do, you tell them how glad you are to be in their presence. There's nothing greater to be present with someone than that. There's no greater gift to your children than to be present. Underneath that Christmas tree, there's nothing. There's nothing that could be greater than your full occupancy in their current moment. To be interested in their world, to listen to their listening. For them to know that you're truly with them and that they are truly with you, is the greatest gift, the present. That's where connections arise. 
That's where your grandest will, your best goodness, your wisdom comes into contact with you. That's where your essential self, your dormant self, your authentic self, not the wounded one, but the wounded one that's included and that underneath it all, if you back up far enough, all of that, that inexperience, that wise innocence, that virtual possibility that has a chance to meet you there can imbue itself through your being, through your ability to see, through your ability to be changed by others, and your ability to receive the wholeness. That's what it means to be blessable in the holy days. That's what it means. It's a restorative process. It means to die back into life. It means to raise your standards. It means to raise your standards on being present. It means to let yourself, your inner voice, follow the most sacred projects that speak inside you, pregnantly, that part of you, to arrive there again. My highest hopes for you is that the 2017 year will be a year of remembrance. By the time we get to the end of next year, you will look back and you will have counted up. You'll have an inventory of enrichment by virtue of those connections, of being changed and being generous. Those were the simple virtues. That you did your part to intend the things that you wanted to create and achieve, but you let the other parts fill in themselves because you made space for it. You let life be in the business of creating life because you're doomed to make choices. You were lived by life more. Yeah. You listened your way to what you wanted to create. You were willing to create it, but you you had willingness to listen. And you played both sides, receptivity and occupation with your intention. They go hand in hand. You lob your intention into your attention. You can do this. So I look forward to a great 2017. Right now, when you wrap up, I'd like you to journal or write down whatever struck you in this. And then when you do a look back on the year, ask yourself four questions. If I look back on my year, what was the thing that inspired me the most this year? What took me into my spirit? What brought me into the most spirited moment? What did I take inspiration in the most? What surprised me most this last year? What was it that I didn't expect that surprised me and showed up? What touched me or moved me this year? What touched me or moved me this year the most? What brought meaning to my life-building process this year? Who initiated me this year in moving me? Who initiated me this year? And then what challenged me beyond the familiar? How did I grow? How did I stretch? Consolidate your gains for the year. Write down your answers. Do a group exercise. Ask your family to dialogue about this, about what inspired each of you this year around the table. What was it that challenged you beyond the familiar? What stretched you? Who were those that initiated you and touched you or moved you? And what was it that astonished you and amazed you? Because that's when you know you're fully alive. You're fully living. That's when you know the cards that you normally put at the bottom of the deck or on the top to meet life. Thank you so much for listening and having a great year with the Mock Zero Show. We look forward to great shows in the 2017 year. It is our highest hopes that um, you reach out to yourself and you get help in creating your dreams and aspirations by bringing in a companion to ride sidecar Because your dreams are bigger than your capacity to create it. Knowing your limitations means you're strong enough to be weak. You're comfortable with your own ignorance. To get help, teamwork, and collaboration. That's why we're in business at the VIP Coach. It's to be there for yourself in all aspects of your potential. With your ability to be creatively free, to be creatively valuable, and to be creatively on purpose. Interdependently. Fused in all of that to build a brilliant enterprise that truly serves the world in all of its aspects and rewards you obscenely well 
for what you do with all the profits you need to oxygenate your most important purposes. We are delighted in our ability to help because there's a lot of help out there that is not helpful. And it is our conviction to help with real help, honest help, help that you truly need, not help that we think you do, but help that you truly do need. Our number is 714-375-6624. I wish you a very, very happy holiday, holy day, and a wonderful, cherishable time with you, your loved ones, and to meet life in 2017. Thank you. For more tools, go to highlevelperformance.com. Better business, better life. Fast growth, keeping things simple. Or visit us on Facebook, Mock Zero, making time for life one thing at a time. Set boundaries, focus your attention, and maintain a positive state of mind. Hire a VIP coach to help you. Call 714-912-9261.